Welcome into the End of Money podcast for Saturday, June 24th. Tom Leach along with Jim Goodman, Keeneland's Director of Mutuals and Simulcasting, as we take a look at the late pick four at Churchill Downs, and it is headlined by the Grade 3 Chicago Handicap, 10th race on their card. Jim, and this uh, was the race that uh, Forever Unbridled was initially pointed to, and then she changed gears and was a very impressive winner last week at the Fleur de Lis. So that leaves Finley's Lucky Charm as the big favorite in here. That would have been a an interesting matchup between those two. So Finley's lucky charm is, uh, is I think, a big favorite in here. Do you think you can beat her? I think seven furlongs might be a little bit of a question mark, but, I mean, if you look at her last six races, the only race she lost was a seven furlong race in the La Brea at Santa Anita, and she only lost by half a length to a pretty good Philly named Constellation. So I I think she's, she's the class of the field here. There's a couple other horses that I do like playing under her, but – I'm going to single her in the pick four that we talk about in a minute. So I think it would have been a great race. The way uh, Forever Unbridled ran, uh, she might come back and, and run in another week. I mean, she was really ready off that layoff straight last weekend. Finley's Lucky Charm is my pick here. Um, one to five in the grade three winning colors last out, and she won like a one to five supposed to. She drew away by five and a half. So uh, in great form right now, uh, worst race in the last six has been a 94 buyer, and that one she won by seven and a quarter. So uh, she's five for five at Churchill. I don't, I don't make habits of betting against horses that are perfect on the home, home track. Um, the other horses in here, I think uh, Cat Ballou for King McPeak has, has the back class. Uh, she, she ran okay in the Madison at Keeneland and seven furlongs lost to Paula Silver Lining, who came right back and won at Churchill. So uh, she couldn't handle Finley's lucky charm in the uh, Rock Solana at Churchill on Mar- April 29th. They'd get her some time off. So she may be ready for a, for a good effort off the bench. She'd run a lot of races without a layoff. So uh, Kat Ballou would be my second choice in here. Um, Ivy Bell, the five, is a little intriguing on a three, three race win streak and was pretty impressive coming back. Uh, from that last race to win by two and a half and then put the blame on me was impressive in winning back and she's in here too. So I, I can make a case for put the blame on me, um, uh, Ivy Bell and Cat Ballou to run below that. But uh, I, I'm going to take Finley's Lucky Charm on top. going to be chalky on you. Yeah, I couldn't uh, go against her either. And I uh, was uh, certainly uh, tempted because uh, she's, I think best, it seems like, they've run her most often anyway at six furlongs. A uh, lot at seven. She, But she did run well in a grade one at seven. So uh, I couldn't just talk myself off of her for that reason. But because they've run her more at six than seven, I'm thinking that at least there's a chance she could be vulnerable. And Kath Ballou is, is the main one I looked at if you do try to beat her. Um, Minds and Magic's another one. I think that horse has, has got some back class for Vicky Oliver and has a nice record of, of races at seven furlongs. And you know, some horses uh, just like seven a lot better than six and, and vice versa. So I think uh, Finley's Lucky Charm is going to be my pick, but I'm going to use exacta boxes with uh, both of those in the uh, Chicago Handicap. And we also want to look at the late pick four at Churchill and uh, some, I think, well, well-matched races. This uh, Especially if you could beat Finley's Lucky Charm, this, this could pay uh, nice. We'll start it in the eighth race, and uh, how did your pick four ticket look? I went four deep here. I, I used uh, Miss Medallia, the one horse for Dallas Stewart, who had a lot of trouble last time out at two to one uh, at Fairgrounds. <clears throat> has been off a while, so may have had some issues getting back to the races, but uh, fits here well, and uh, the horse that, that beat her in uh, on her maiden race in, at Fairgrounds came back and won. Um, so I, I went one three six twelve here. The three horse life full of rainbows, who's got seven furlong experience, uh, ran at seven furlongs on June third, along with uh, Miss Vicky, the um, the twelve horse, who I'm also using. And, and she had a tough trip. She was five wide, flattened out. Lannery rides her back, so I think she's got a big shot in here for Tom Amos. And the other horse that I, that I used was What a Star, who uh, had some trouble in the last out and was sent off his favorite and stayed in the back stretch. So I think she fits right there for Catalano. So I think the obvious horses here are the 1, 3, 6, and 12. Uh, then in the second leg, at uh, the allowance race, I went 1, 3, 4, 8, 10. My top pick in there is Nessie, the 3 for Ian Wilkes. But I also used Producer, uh, who uh, won at this distance at Kentucky Downs, the one horse, War Daddy, the 4, Kittens Gold, the 8 for Tom Amos and Drew, and the 10 horse, which is Southern Wild for Rusty Arnold. So I went one three six twelve first leg, one three four eight ten second leg, single the eight in the feature race, and then the last race 
uh, go as deep as you can. I think that one's the wide open, and that's, that's the one that may blow the lid off the prices in the pick four. Uh, my top pick in here was the um, was the I was between the two and the four. Uh, Tis the sound for Dale Romans, although only one for fourteen, and I'm Indy having fun. But I also use the five, eight, nine, eleven. So Miss To Do, Merry Memories, My Kind of Devil, and Soil the Eleven. So uh, wide open here. I, I, I may can afford to go all if I cut back on one of the other earlier tickets. But this is four by five by six, so that gets to be sixty bucks. I started out with three in the first leg. I, I like Miss Vicky making the second start for Amos. Uh, it was a good field that she uh, ran in in the race at Keeneland. Uh, six, what a star I also use for Catalano. And Darlin issues for Tomlinson, the 11. I thought it was a little dangerous horse at a price that uh, may have uh, had a couple of sneaky performances that may be a little better than they look. So I'm going to use uh, 12, 6, and 11 there. I'm going five deep in the uh, turf race. Nessie's the one I like best. But there are two Mike Maker horses, and in a wide open mile and a half turf race, I think I got to throw Makers in there. So uh, the eight and the four, Ransack and Mambo at the gym. Sight, the five. He's got a big shot, and also threw in War Daddy the three. I'm going to use Kath Ballou as well as Finley's Lucky Charm, trying to, to get that favorite beat and have it pay more. And then uh, to keep the ticket at $45, I used three in the last leg. I'm like you. I could certainly be talked into going deeper. Uh, and if you want a single Finley's Lucky Charm, you could certainly uh, go deeper here. I liked My Kind of Devil a little bit. I like the switch to Lannery and the drop in class. Uh, those two things suggest they're... Uh, maybe uh, firing with this one uh, on Saturday. I'm Indy having funds uh, and uh, Merry Memories. The four and the eight are the other two I use. So three by five by two by three uh, for me in the pick four. There's a three-year-old stake race on Saturday that we also want to take a look at. That's up at Thistledowns in the Cleveland area. It's the grade three Ohio Derby. you got three horses coming back out of the Kentucky Derby in there. I, I thought it was one of those three that had to win this. Uh, I don't know if you agree or not, but how do you see the Ohio Derby? Um, yeah, you actually got four horses that ran the Derby because Fast and Accurate came oh, that's back right. and ran, yeah. ran the Arlington Classic. But uh, you got four horses exiting the Derby, and, and uh, I, I'm like you. I, I did not use <clears> – <throat> I thought it was between the three who came at, directly out of the Derby and haven't run since then. Um, and I came down – I narrowed it down to two, and I, and I kind of got on the bluegrass winner. Uh, home court advantage here, I guess, talking about a Keeneland horse. I route never had a shot in the in the Derby. I don't know if he had a shot to win it anyway, but but he beat some really good horses on Bluegrass Day. One of which came back and won the Belmont. So uh, he beat Tapperit that day. He beat McCracken that day. And even though he was a maiden, and we were all wringing our hands about a maiden winning the Bluegrass, it may turn out to be that that field was better than we expected at the end of the Bluegrass because I think Tapperit's going to be really good the rest of the year, and I think McCracken's got a shot to get a lot better too. So. Uh, I rep beat a couple of really good horses um, uh, in J Boys Echo. He beat it was the best prep race on paper, and even though he was a, a maiden, he got really good really quickly, and and they and they shipped him over here from California at the right time, and now he comes back in a pretty good spot in the Ohio Derby. So I, I'm gonna I'm gonna take I rep. I think Gervin, you give him a pass for the Derby, and if you just wipe that out and say, okay, he got trouble at the start and 20 horse field, never had his chance. If you go off the Louisiana Derby win and take him to a grade three Ohio Derby, he becomes a, re- a deserving favorite as well. So I think gervin has got a big shot in here if he bounces back. Um, and the other the other horse, I don't think fast and accurate fits here. I think he was very lucky to win the spiral on a, on a synthetic track, and I don't think he's good enough to beat these other two. Um, Untrapped has been kind of a disappointment. Uh, I thought he was one of the best horses in Arkansas. He just never came through, so... I think he's a step below these as well, and, and uh, I think his derby was not as eventful. He just didn't fit. So I, I'm, I'm going to take our wrap on top of Gervin, uh, with, and I'm going to throw um, the Lahooch horses in there, the three horses that are the Lahooch horses that are running as an entry, the uh, Game Over, Talk Less, and uh, Vibe. So I'm going to play a wrap on top with probably the other derby horses and the entry below. I took uh, I rep too. Um, I think Doug O'Neill's always dangerous when he ships out. And um, this horse, there's a race for three-year-olds in California he could have stayed for, and they sent this one out here. So I'm betting that he thinks this is maybe his, his best shot here. Um, 
I like the fact that they're putting Le Peru back on him, who won with him on the bluegrass, didn't ride him in the derby, but uh, takes the, goes up to take this ride uh, in, in Cleveland and give up a day at uh, Churchill Downs. So um, I like that. And uh, horses worked well, series of six furlong works. So uh, give me IRAP. Uh, Gervin, I think, is the one to beat. I'm going to also uh, use IRAP in an exacto box with Untrapped just out of respect for, for Asmussen. So 2 5 two, three, uh, for me in the Ohio Derby. Uh, best of luck with your wagers uh, this weekend. And anything special going on for Keelan Select customers? We're, having, uh, we're not having a contest this weekend. We will have a contest on June 30th, the closing night at Churchill. And I want to remind everybody, Churchill has kind of a, a different closing week. So after we go through this weekend, Churchill runs Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and they run twilight programs each night, either 5 or 6 o'clock. So that's their last three days, and Ellis Park opens on July 1st. Churchill is not open on July 4th holiday this year. So Churchill does close out on June 30th. Make sure you get all your bets in on Keeneland Select, or you can come to Red Mile and watch it. And uh, they have mandatory payouts, of course, the last day of the meet. So that'll, that'll come up next Friday, the 30th. Uh, this weekend, uh, if, you, if you're if out in the area, uh, we're getting ready for the Junior League out here, but we're still open for simulcasting, and uh, everything should be uh, wide open, and it'll be a Nice weekend to get out of the weather. It sounds like it's going to be a little rainy on Saturday. Amen to that. Best of luck with your Saturday wagers. And for Jim Goodman, I'm Tom Leach. That's the In the Money Podcast for KeenelandSelect.com.